Hey guys, Sage here with Sigma 3 Survival School and today we're going to be looking at the third principle of the six principles of survival and that is to maintain your core body temperature. So stick with me. So in the first two parts of the six principles of survival, we talked about how it is so important that you mitigate your risk and fear and that you meet your first aid and security needs. So if you missed those two parts, go back and check those out after you finish this video here. But today we're talking about maintaining your core body temperature. This is one of the most important aspects to survival. We a lot of times try to prioritize what is more important, whether it be fire, shelter, or water, but they really go hand in hand. The reality is it comes down to maintaining that core body temperature and staying hydrated. We'll look at some of the other priorities later on as we hit some of the other principles. But without having your core body temperature in check, then your body's going to begin to step into the onsets of hypothermia or hyperthermia. And so the rules of three tells us that we can only go three hours with extreme exposure. So if I had to prioritize any of those, then that means that my priorities need to be based off of my ability to meet the needs of maintaining my core body temperature. So what that means is it means fire and shelter could very well be one, the same in one when it comes to meeting that need. However, if the circumstances dictate, there are times where fire is going to be your priority. And there are going to be other times where shelter is your priority. So it's important that instead of trying to determine which one is most important, it's best to just realize that they are essential and vital to one purpose, and that's maintaining your core body temperature. And so understanding that will help you realize your needs whenever you find yourself in a survival situation. So we can go three hours of exposure, three days without water, and three weeks without food. But the reality is, is all those are based off of the variables of your circumstances. And so we can't always just be like, oh, that's, that's the priority. That's what I got to work on. That's why I prefer to look at my survival needs based off of principles instead of necessarily priorities. Um, your priorities are always going to be changing, but the principles will always be the same. And that's why maintaining your core body temperature is so important. We're going to be looking at different types of aspects of that by shelter and fire. And first I want to start off by looking at shelter. So let us first look at the three primary forms of shelter. One is the clothing that you wear on your back. Um, it's so important that you dress in layers instead of even in the hot summertime, I'll usually try to wear a couple different layers. And that way I can always add or remove layers. Uh, making sure that your clothing meets your environment is also important. Make sure that you try to avoid wearing clothes that contain cotton, and I know we're all guilty of it, um, but cotton kills, and they say that for a reason. Try to make your clothing wool or wicking type clothing that uh, will help maintain heat even when wet. Beyond clothing, then we need to start looking at one of the second forms of shelter, which is a structure itself and so we have multiple forms of structures here that we teach at Sigma 3 Survival School everything from the wiki up behind me to debris huts which are perfect for winter time and as of late there's been a little bit of debate on them but the main problem that we see with shelters that we see especially on YouTube or even our students who build these shelters is they make them entirely way too big and so people are bashing the debris hut right now saying they don't work but the reality is I've slept in a debris hut at one degree temperature outside with snow on the ground in my underwear because I was too hot inside of it. So don't tell me they don't work. You just got to know how to build them. Understanding that your shelters are more than just leaves and sticks. Understanding that there is a science behind the shelter. Um, that goes to everything from realizing that there's a certain amount of dead air space that you need to obtain to an amount of insulation that you need to provide for your shelter. All these are key aspects that we teach in our classes. When you can understand that a shelter will meet your needs at 60 degrees outside and that by implementing proper dead air space and insulation 
every foot or one inch will drop it down to another 10 degrees. Those are the type of skills that you're going to learn by taking a class that you're not going to get by watching a YouTube video. So realizing that everybody out there is trying to build way too big of shelters. They're way just um, over exaggerated. Um, sure, they're comfortable and they would work great in the summertime, but they're not three season shelters or four season shelters. Um, we also teach things like the uh, jungle hooch, which is an amazing shelter for um, summertime or getting off the ground. It's called the jungle hooch for a reason because it came, the design came from, you know, some of the Indians who train in the Costa Rica and, and Nicaraguan jungles. Um, we also cover the, one of the most comfortable and common shelters, which is our lean-to. Um, it's one of my favorites because it is open on one side and closed in on three and I can have a fire out front and because I'm claustrophobic it really is a comfortable shelter for me. The uh, um, Another common shelter is what we call the woodland sleeping bag and all it is is a bed frame that you fill full of leaves and you sleep in it and so those are all amazingly different types of primitive shelters and when you can understand the concepts behind them not just what they look like that's when you're going to be able to begin to build effective shelters. The third form of shelter that we talk about is fire. Fire in itself creates an ambient atmosphere and that's really what we're trying to do in all of our shelters. We're trying to create microclimates. So whether that's by having dead airspace in our clothing layers or having wind blocks from our shelters or walls on our shelters or whether we are trying to create a radiant heat energy around us um, all those are forms of microclimates and it is crucial that your microclimate is able to help you withstand the elements and maintain once again that core body temperature we'll be looking at fire a little bit later in the video um, it may even be a second part so just stay tuned in case we make it a second part um, it'll be part two of maintaining core body temperature but I really want us to hone in on shelter for a minute and understanding that it's there's a science behind these principles whether it be the dead air space or also as simple as the construction understanding the design are you transferring heat through it through circula circulation or are you having little compact pockets of air that are maintaining heat a lot of those things come into play when you start breaking down the essentials of shelter. Um, another thing to keep in mind is shelter footprints and shelter locations. Those are things that we don't often see people talk about when it comes to discussing shelter. And each of these components are vital to your safety, but also to maintaining that body temperature. So you'll see where I'm standing, there's this beautiful flat open spot here on the ground that would be a perfect place for a shelter if it wasn't for the giant widow maker just behind it. I can't tell you how many times I've had to have students move their tents because they stuck it right underneath that widow maker. So when choosing a shelter location it's vital that you're aware of the widow makers, that you're aware of the wildlife. Don't set up on game trails. Even if it's a human path, a human trail, animals will always choose the path of least resistance. So you're just as likely to encounter bears, bobcats, and mountain lions on a human trail as you are humans. Also, it's important that you understand where the water is, making sure that you are close by to access water, but that you're not in a floodplain. Make sure there's adequate wood around to have structure building materials, but also firewood. And then, once again, be aware of the weather and wind. That could be everything from making sure that you're not, your shelter's not facing towards a high wind um, and then making sure you're not set up in an area that's going to endanger you due to extreme weather. The other thing that most people don't think about is where the sun is and so a lot of times people will debate on which direction to have their shelters faced. I prefer more of a southeasternly uh, facing direction for my door or my shelter to face um, but you definitely want either in the east or the southeast to get the maximum exposure to the sun. So the last concept I want to talk about when it comes to shelters is understanding the mechanical heat transference and the, the heat loss. And so if we break it down to the basic essentials of the law of thermodynamics, 
it'll tell us that heat transfers from hot to cold and that heat rises. So if you take those elements into play when it comes to building your shelter, it's gonna help you create a more efficient shelter. So the three primary ones we I wanna talk about real quick are convection, radiation, and conduction. So convection is heat loss through the transfer of air or movement. So you got heat loss through movement. That could be everything as simple as a breeze hitting your shelter. And that's why it's important that when you build your shelters that they have more than one wall. If you just have one wall, the wind will come around and it'll pretty much suck the heat away from you. Uh, the other one is conduction. And that's why it's important that whenever you build a shelter that you have some type of ground mat. Um, one of my favorite uh, tarp shelters is kind of a modified baker's tent slash lean-to. And in this, this tarp shelter, I have a ground barrier, which is going to help protect me from conduction. There are numerous different types of tarp shelters that you can build, and we have multiple videos on those. Um, but you can also check online, and we would love to be able to have you guys come out to a class and teach you a bunch of different shelter principles and different shelter tarp setups. But the key is, is when you build your shelter, no matter whether it's a tarp or it's a natural structure that is protecting you from the ground or objects that are colder than you are, because whether it's a rock or ice, um, you need something that's going to be a barrier, a ground barrier. Otherwise, that ground will literally suck the heat out of you. So convection is heat loss through movement, but conduction is heat loss through contact. The last form of heat loss that I want to talk about before we move on to fire is to understand radiation. Your bo body loses heat or gains heat through the transfer of heat through energy. Uh, and it's important that you understand that whenever your fire puts off heat, your body absorbs that heat. And that's why it's important that if you build an open face shelter, open front shelter, that it is capable of having a fire so that your body can absorb that heat. If you're not going to have a fire though, it's so important that your shelter captures your body heat. That's why you have to keep your shelter low and fairly close to you. And that way, if, you, if also if you can round off the inside of it, that's going to allow the heat and air to flow in it instead of capturing in little pockets in the peak of your shelter. Um, these are all crucial and basic principles towards meeting your core body temperature. Um, hopefully you learned a few things about shelter concepts. We go into a lot greater detail in our classes. Um, but right now I want us to look at moving on to fire. Um, I think I'm going to have more than enough content for one video to cover shelter. So I'm going to plan on doing a second part for meeting core body temperature and we'll be looking at fire. Um, you don't want to miss that video, so stay tuned. Be sure to check back often. And as always, I want to thank you guys for check, taking the time and watching these videos and realizing that there is more to survival than just going out and playing in the woods. There is a science behind it, and there are principles that if you can begin to learn and hone, you're going to be better off because of it. So once again, thanks, guys, for checking it out. Hopefully you learned something. Once again, as always, share, subscribe, and... Uh, Stay tuned for another episode on the six principles of survival. I almost need the damn microphone for the tree frogs. Shut up, tree frogs! Yeah, I'm talking to you. Shut up! Hey! Yeah, shut up! Yes, thank you. Just shut up. Yes, I'm talking to you. Shut up! All right, stop your laughing because I'm about to go. Bailey, uh-uh. Stay. All right, the train's passed. I got the tree frogs to shut up. See how much work this is?